Hello everyone. Today we are going to be looking at complex numbers. Now complex numbers came because equations like x squared plus 1 equals 0 had no real solutions. Now in order to take care of this problem, mathematicians created an expanded number of systems using the imaginary unit i. Now we define this i as equal to square root of minus 1, where i square equals minus 1. Now what we did was we added real numbers to the real multipliers of this imaginary unit and we got the set of complex numbers. So let's define what is a complex number. Now by definition, a complex number is a number of the form a plus bi and this is called the number written in the standard form. If b is 0, then the number a plus bi equals simply a. This is nothing but a real number for us. Whereas when b is not equal to 0, then the number a plus bi is called an imaginary number. And the third form is when the a of this complex number is 0, then we get a purely imaginary number. So let's look at some example here. Say 3 minus 2i. This is a pure, is an imaginary number, sorry are numbers like 4i. Now this is a purely imaginary number. Or numbers like minus, say, 8 minus i. This again is an imaginary or a complex number. Now each one of them, we are writing it in the standard form. Now let's go a little deeper into this. So when we denote this number z, equals a plus bi as a complex number, a is called the real part of the complex number a plus bi and the number bi, this is called the imaginary part of the complex number. Let's do some examples. Now, we're going to have three numbers here, say 3 minus 4i. The real part is the number 3, imaginary part is 4i, and this is a, just an imaginary number. Let's look at the number 8i. Now this 8i, there is no real part, so we count this as 0. An imaginary part is 8i, so this is a purely imaginary number. Let's look at the number 7. The real part is 7, no imaginary part, and this is a real number. Let's look at another example, say square root of 8 plus i. Now this part, what's the real part? Square root a. What's the imaginary part? i with the constant 1. And this one is an imaginary number. Okay, let's take another example, say square root 2 minus in the front an i. Clearly the real part is 0, the imaginary part is negative square root i and this is a pure imaginary number. Now let's look at some more concepts about complex numbers. The first thing is if you say two complex numbers are equal. Let the two complex numbers be say a plus bi and c plus di. We are writing it in the standard form. If we say this, these two numbers are equal, then the real part should equal the real part of the other complex number and the imaginary part of the first complex number bi should equal um, the second one, this is di. 
So here we talk about equality. More important for us are the operations which we do on complex numbers. Now these operations are addition, subtraction, uh, we also have multiplication and division. So let's look at addition and subtraction of complex numbers. Now if I have two complex numbers, say a plus b and c plus di, when we're going to add them, we're just going to do normal addition and we keep the idea of adding the uh, numbers uh, which are having the same expression together. Similarly for the differences. So let's look at the examples. So you have 8 minus 7i plus minus 3 plus 5i. So if I want to add this complex number, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the constants and then I'm going to add the imaginary parts together. So 8 minus 7i minus 3 plus 5i. So what do we get here is 8 minus 3 is 5. Now remember these are 7i and 5i are basically like having the same variables. You can think of them that these are two like numbers having the same variable i. So when we add this one is minus 2i. And hence, we have done our work in adding two complex numbers. Now, let's look at another example. 9 plus 6i, but we are subtracting it from the another complex number, negative 2, negative 8i. Now, when I do this one, the first thing I would do is distribute the minus inside this expression of complex number given by minus 2 minus 8i. So let's write that one. So it's 9 plus 6i. Now I'm going to take the minus inside. So when I take the minus inside, it becomes plus 2 plus 8i. Now we just have to add the like terms. Now this is 9 plus 2 is 11. 6 and 8 is 14, plus 14i, and we are done. Now let's look at a little difficult example where we're not given terms of i. So the first thing we have to do is, what is this telling us? Now recall that we said that i equals square root of minus 1. So if I write square root of minus 4, Remember your radical roots um, properties? I can write this as minus 1 times 4, which I can further write it as square root minus 1 times square root 4. Now clearly, square root minus 1 is i and square root 4 is 2. Now we get the same thing, i times 2 can, is the same thing as you're writing it as 2 times i. There is no difference. So let's go ahead, now change all these square roots with the negative numbers in their appropriate i forms. Now square root of minus 4 is now going to be 2i plus minus 4, and this is negative of square root of negative 4, which is negative 2i. Now we can remove the parentheses in the next line. So it's 2i plus, oh sorry, it's going to be negative 4, and negative 2i. Notice the two i's uh, are opposite in sign but equal in number value. They cancel out each other. So the final answer is negative 4. Okay, so we have learned how to do addition and subtraction. We're going to now look at multiplication of complex numbers. Now, before we do some multiplication, I would like to talk about 
how these eyes work out. So now we all know because the complex number has this imaginary unit called i equals square root of minus 1, where i square is minus 1. Okay, now let's look how did this i square become minus 1? What is i square? This is i times i. Now, which I can write this as square root of minus 1 times square root of minus 1. Now which I can further write this as because this is square root minus 1 multiplied to itself I can say this is square root of minus 1 square. Now remember this has power 1 and 1 so this is square. So clearly the square root and the 2 cancel out with each other. What are we left with? i squared equals minus 1. Now let's look at i cube. Now what is i cube? So let's look at i cube. i cube can be written as i squared times i. Now we're going back to our the exponent properties. So i squared we first found was nothing but minus 1 times i. So i cube is nothing but minus i. Now let's look at i4. i4 can be written as i square times i square, which is nothing as i square is minus 1, minus 1 times minus 1. And when you multiply minus 1 twice, you're basically going to get 1. So this is how we basically have the whole i in four different terms. i is square root of minus 1, i squared is minus 1, i cubed is minus i, i4 is r. This is the most important thing guys for us to remember when we do multiplication or division of complex numbers. Now let's start with some examples but keep this handy every time we do work on these problems. Now the first thing we're going to do is multiply two complex numbers 3i with 4 minus 2i. Now before we go applying these i values we are first going to distribute 3i. So what we get 3i times 4 minus 3i times 2i. Now the first one, when you distribute it, is simply 12i. Now minus here, now you're going to multiply the constants, 3 with the 2 you get 6, and i with an i you get i square. Now notice what is i square? i square, guys, is minus 1. So we are going to change the i squared over here to minus 1. So I can write this as 12i minus 6, replacing i squared by minus 1. So what we, we get from here is, after just doing that little algebra, 12i plus 6. So when you multiply 3i with 4 minus 2i, you get 12i plus 6. It is the same thing as writing it as 6 plus 12i, just to be consistent with the standard form. Now let's look at another example. It's square root 4 minus square root 16. Now notice this is not having the i present. We have to first get the i. Now remember from a previous example, what did we say? That square root of minus 4 is right square root of minus 1 times square root of 4 which is basically i times 2 which is the same as 2i. So in simple words to remember is that if you have a negative inside the square root and you know about complex numbers so automatically the moment you see a negative you say hey this is i and you write the rest of the terms 
with their proper expression. So here is square root of 16 and this i is representing square root of minus 1. So what do we get here is 4i. Now we're going to come back and look at the problem which was given to us and replace the square root minus 4 with 2i and square root minus 16 with 4i. So what do we get here is 2i times 4i. Now when we multiply the constants we get 8 but i square when we multiply i with an i. Now remember i square equals minus 1. So your final answer is minus 8. Okay, let's do one, another example on multiplication of complex numbers. Now the first one is 